good day everyone and welcome back to the channel in today's video i'm going to be covering how excel users can begin their machine learning journey using the data analysis tool pack in excel i made another video on the differences between statistical and machine learning do follow that so that you get a, a clue on what's the what's, what is the difference between the two and i've also made another video on multiple regression i'll leave that in the description as well I'm going to be taking the example of simple linear regression, a very simple and probably the most basic model. But the understanding this model can help you a long way in your machine learning journey and will help you understand the core concepts and the processes that we follow in machine learning. So stay tuned to the end to get a deep understanding and you'll see a lot of the core concepts are repeated in building models in your machine learning journey. Having said that, as I explained in my earlier videos, Excel should not be primarily used for machine learning. It can be used for analysis, but if you want to scale the way you visualize your data and use statistical analysis, I would suggest you use R. And if you want to build industry-grade, production-ready models, you can use Python or a mixture of, of both. But to understand certain machine learning concepts or to understand how algorithms work, Excel sometimes helps a lot in doing the calculations so that you can understand how they work and then to scale up your solutions, you can go for R or or Python and again it's very easy for Excel users to transition into those languages as well. R is more simpler. But before we dive right into it, do not forget to subscribe to my channel for the latest of data analytics across different technologies. So let's take a look at the data set. I have a cars data set. It has a different name of the cars. It has uh, around 32 observations and around you know, roughly uh, so many variables. Okay. And so let's see it has the car name, it has the miles per gallon, cylinder, displacement, horsepower and some other you know, variables, gears, etc. In this example, we're going to be taking simple linear, linear regression. So in this, we're going to be talking of only two variables. One is the independent variable, that is the variable we want to predict or the target variable. And one is the dependent variable or the predictor, the variable which we are, which we are going to use to predict. So for this example, I'm going to be taking, let's say the miles per gallon and displacement. And let us see if we can build a simple linear reg regression model for these two variables. So let's get right into it. I'm going to copy this control shift down arrow. I'm going to select the displacement control shift down arrow. I'm going to create a new sheet. Let's name this simple linear regression. All right. Let's paste this here. All right. I'm not copied it. So control C and let's paste it here. All right. It's copied. Okay. And now let's take a look at the first step. What we do is we, we, are, we are going to do some exploratory data analysis to see what is the distribution of the data. It's very important. And again, as I'm saying, the model is very simple, but how the model is built, how the model works and what are the steps will be repeated across any other models that you build. So you'll be quite familiar with the, with the different steps by the end of this video. So first, let us say we have 33, uh, 32 observations. I'm going to take three observations. Roughly, we take 20%. But I'm going to take three observations for you know, testing, okay, so that we have more data for training. And I'm going to rename this as train. This data is going to be used for training the model. And I'm going to be create a new sheet for test. Okay. So new sheet. Let me I pasted it here by mistake. New sheet. And let's paste it here. Okay. These are your test variables. Okay. Uh, let us copy this. The miles per gallon and displacement. So insert MPG D D I S P. All right. So now let's take a look at the training set and let us see what are the distribution of these you know, variables. How are they distributed? Because when you do simple linear regression, you have to make assumptions on your data and understand your, your data first before you create the model. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to insert. I'll click on recommended charts and you can do this by different ways. I'm going to select my favorite way that I'm going to use the, the box plot. If you want to understand more on what's a box plot or how it uh, works, I made a video on that. You can take a look at that in my, you know, my channel and get an understanding of how the box plot works. Okay. So this is a box plot. Basically, this will tell you how the data is distributed. So, uh, you know, very quick introduction to the box plot. So the whiskers are represent the minimum and the and the maximum and this box represents the interquantile range that means the mid, the middle 50% of your data lies between around say uh, 348 and 
around 125 mark so it, it lies here and this represents the quartile 2 or the middle portion of a data which splits the data so you get an understanding of this let us make it let us see if we can get some more understanding on this on this data okay let us uh, double click this okay and i show the inner points this will tell you how, you, uh, how your data points you can see there are a few outliers here and the data looks a little bit skewed to the right but other than that it looks okay but we can see the outliers and it's very important to understand if there are any outliers in data or you know if uh, when when i say outliers i mean th these are not exactly outliers but they are clo closer to the maximum and the minimum okay so you can see if some uh, some of the values that are not falling in the 50 percent and there are some few extreme values you can probably remove them and try and see how your model works or you can either keep them but again this has to be done with the consent of the domain experts because when you do statistical analysis you have to always uh, uh, have discussions with you know like domain experts and find out what you are doing if the assumptions are correct or wrong now let's take a look again at the miles per gallon let's see because it's very important to know the distribution of the output variable as as well if it's balanced if it's skewed if you have all the output variables having only close to a, a single value or you know it's skewed towards you know one end of the values then your model is not going to be too accurate right so it has to be fairly normally distributed again i'm going to select the box uh, box and whisker plot and you can see your it's quite quite narrow here the data is more spread okay this measures the dispersion of the data it's more spread across the mean it's quite narrow looks fairly okay for now let's name this as disp distribution distribution and let's let's name this as so that we know when we when we come back as mpg distribution do stick around to the end because it gets very interesting once you understand these concepts you'll see that you'll have to do the similar steps and you'll understand how you should do your data modeling okay so now once i've got that now let us take a look at are there any relationships between the two if there are any if there aren't any relationships that we can model then there's no point in trying to do a simple linear regression but if there's some relationship that can be modeled then we can build a good model around the same so i'm going to insert again i am going to recommended charts and this time it has selected the right scatter chart for me which i want so i'm going to click okay okay and you can see there's some sort of a linear relationship however it has plotted i think uh, displacement on the y axis and uh, the miles per gallon on the x axis but actually the miles per gallon is the is the y variable which is the target variable so ideally we have the target variable on the y axis so let us flip this around okay again i'm going to remove the grid lines i like to keep it clean okay and uh, let us see what we can do okay so let's click on select data okay i'll edit the series edit i get the y and the x axis so now simply i'm just going to remove this okay what do I want? I want displacement as the x variable. So I'm sort of going to select, drag it down. Okay, again remove this and y variable. And again, you can just hit control shift and down arrow. Quickly select it for you and click on OK. And yes, so now you can see we have a displacement on the on the x axis and we have the miles per gallon on the on the y axis. And you can see there's a, a linear trend. As the displacement increases the miles per gallon decreases so you know as the displacement increases the miles per gallon the mileage goes down and you can do one more thing you can put a trend line to see if there's a model yes so you can see this can be modeled and now so you you are encouraged by this relationship and now you can know that you can go for some modeling and then you can also tune the model to see if it's going to get better and better and that is basically how you will do your machine learning so let's take a look at how we we'll, how we'll do that okay so let's build our first machine learning model i'm going to create a new sheet called model I'm going to build the regression model and this is called our benchmark model and then we will compare we'll build we will build other models and compare against our benchmark if the performance is improving or decreasing so let's take a look at it for that i'm going to be using the data analysis tool pack if it's not there you can add it from the plugin sections from file options okay but it will be there in most of the excel version so i click on this data analysis tool pack i'm going to select regression here i'm going to click on okay now why is the target variable that is, that is a variable i want to predict so this is okay i'll drag, I'll drag it down all right now let me go to the x range and drag this down ok 
okay so i'm going to click on labels because the labels are included and uh, i'm going to leave this for default for now i'm not going to take the the meanings of these in in this session because you need more understanding on that i'm going to click you uh, you want to click on the residues the residual plots and the line fit plots i'll explain why uh, you know later and i'll make a detailed video on that as well if you want to understand the the detail on that and we're going to put the output range and select the output range i'm going to select in the model sheet and let's click on okay and here is your first machine learning model yay okay so now let's take a look at a few a few statistical values because as i mentioned we we are doing modeling based on statistical analysis so it's few important to understand a few statistical you know values if you want a session on a detailed understanding of each of these values do let me know i'll make uh, a session on that but here i'm just going to cover the basics and the most important ones but as well okay so we want to first take a look at this value this is called the the multiple r value multiple r value explains that how much let's go back to the diagram how much of your y variable can be explained by your x variable okay so here it is 0.84 which means is 0.84 which means that 84% of your variance or your variability in your y variable can be explained by your x variable that is your displacement so it's pretty good it's quite high and your error is 3.25 it's pretty less so that that also is good let's mark this now we want to take a look at the ANOVA. This is the analysis of variance, and here the you can see the the significance f or the or it's called also also called as the p test. This is very low, so this establishes whether you have a linear relationship or not. If this is greater than 0.05, you can discard the model or add different variables and then evaluate because probably if it's greater than 0.05, it will not work. The model is not good. So this is very low. That means there is a regression case. So we are good on that. And these are the coefficients. So basically, this is your model. This is your y-intercept, and this is your slope, your x-coefficient, right? So this is your uh, you are going to be using this to create your models. Now this will take you know like very quickly. So basically, this is the distribution of your of your you know values across across your x variables. So these are like your errors. Residues are basically like your errors. And this is the predicted MPG and the existing mice per gallon. So you can see it closely fits the data. So it's a good model. And the residues basically are the error uh, across each of the predicted values. So let us see now if we can improve the model, okay, further. It's already pretty good, but let's see if we can improve. And this, I'm, the the reason I'm exploring this is so that you know that building machine learning models is you have multiple steps, multiple experiments, and that's why it's called data science, right? You have to have multiple iterations and understand and explain what your model can do, especially in statistical an an analysis. So let's go back here again. Let's see. So we had seen that there are some values lying close to the maximum, and so if we have a condition, say we discuss with the with the experts, the domain experts, and they say that the middle fifty percent of the data closely represents the actual state of the data in the industry, and there are and the values like four fifty and four hundred for displacement are like outliers, very very you know rare. So we can discard them, or they, or for all we know that is that the lower displacement may be the outliers because maybe cars are not being made with such such lower displacements. So these as assumptions you can make along with the domain experts so that you know how your model is built. Always have assumptions done with the with the domain experts. So let us now and uh, just for for this this example say that anything above three fifty right is uh, you know kind of an outlier or maybe maybe you know like rare values. So what we can do is we, let's try to eliminate that and see if the model improves. Okay. So I'm going to select the filter condition. I'm going to say filter. This is again. I'm not done this in consulting with the domain expertise. Just to show you, okay, that I, this is my assumption that anything above three fifty probably those kind of displacements are not being made anymore or, or they're very rare. So less than or equal to. Let us take three fifty as an example. Three fifty, and say okay. Okay. Now let us copy this data down. And we can just have a a new training set. Okay, new training set. I'm going to clear the filter. Clear the filter so that it doesn't affect the model. Okay, clear the filter. And now we can have we say I have a new training set. So let's again run the the simple linear model against this training set. So I go to data again. Click on the data analysis tool pack. Click on regression. I'm going to delete this. Okay, I'm going to select miles per gallon for the new data set. Control shift down. Okay, delete this. Select the x variable for the new data set. Control shift down. Okay, keep everything same, and uh, just change the output range. Go to the model sheet and select the select below here. Okay, so this is my second model. Click on OK. 
and here you have my second model so I can say model 2 now you can compare okay. you can see this is 84 this is 0.86 so you have 2% improvement in the model 0.86 it is improved more again this is with my assumption okay this assumption I need to I, I, I need to validate with the actual domain users but for our case we have assumed this to be true that uh, above 350 is like an outlier or rare values so I can ignore them and so my model accuracy has improved okay you can see standard error also has gone down so it's become more and more accurate okay and you can take a look at the plots as well so these are my new plots on my model you can see most of the outliers are, some of the outliers are gone and the model is closely fitting its its data okay again you can see the let us see the coefficients for the uh, this okay so let us see the p values first again the p values are very low that means actually if the p-value is greater than 0 0.05 okay so we assume in, st in statistical in learning we assume the null hypothesis that there is no linear relationship if the p-value is greater than 0 0.05 or you know five percent we we have to reject uh, we, we have to fail to reject the null hypothesis here it is very very small it is 2.31 into the power of 10 raised to minus 8 into 10 raised to minus, uh, minus 8 so it's very small so we can very surely reject the null hypothesis which means that this is of statistical uh, significance that means this has a predictive power for my y variable okay so now let us try to predict okay for what all we, we, uh, we have been waiting so far so we'll take model 2 it's a better benchmark model let us go and try to now predict with our tra uh, training data so let us see predicted mpg okay let's see again this is your your final step and you'll keep on you know, revising and make more you know assumptions along the way but you you know, get the idea so let's see equal to i'm going to select model i'm going to choose the for model 2 yeah this is model uh, model 2 yeah i'm going to choose the coefficient this plus so this is your y intercept plus the slope or the coefficient multiplied by the x and uh, x intercept so i'm going to select this value multiply by and I'm going to fix this value because I'm going to drag this down. I'm going to fix these two values. Hit F4. Hit F4. Okay. Multiply by and here I'm going to select the displacement, right? Because I want to predict the, I want to predict the miles per gallon. I'm going to hit enter and you can double click this part. And here you can see now my model is ready and the predictions have been made. So you can see it, it is, it is predicted 23.66 and the actual miles per gallon is 19.7. Here it has predicted almost exactly 14.77 and the actual miles per gallon is 15 and here it is 21.4 and it's predicted 25.02 so it's very very close to the actual to the actual miles per gallon and remember this is the test data that means the model has been trained without seeing this data so it is not seen this data so it is not overfitted and it is uh, it is predicted based on this uh, on the data it has not seen so it is quite uh, it is quite accurate I hope you understand, uh, understood how you could begin your machine learning journey with this simple concept and most of the models you'll, you'll be using follow the same processes but you'll have to understand how the models work and then you can use the same processes to train your models. I'll be making more videos in Excel trying to explain different machine learning concepts and then you can scale your journey with R or Python. So do follow along in my channel and don't forget to hit uh, the subscribe, leave a comment on what you liked and stay tuned for the latest of data analytics across different technologies. Thank you.